Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines, and welcome back to International Zine Month. This is my catch-up video number two, Electric Boogaloo. So we'll be covering a few of these, uh, <laughs> a few of these days I missed. So where we left off was at number 17, and the official prompt for number 17 is make a flyer for your zine to trade, send out with zine orders and trades. Um, which is really fun and something right up my alley and something that I did not get around to doing. <laughs> and I'm really sorry about that. I'd really like to at some point. Um, I just feel like it's not going to happen and I need to let go of that for now. <laughs> but, you know, that's something I'll work on. I do, however, have a flyer from... Crap Pandemic, which is a zine distro that I love very much and that I sell my zines through. And as you can see right here, my zines are featured on this flyer. Thanks, Julia. So uh, this counts, right? I got my zines on a flyer. I don't have to make my own yet. <laughs> At some point I will. I also want to highlight this amazing video that I found. It's basically somebody made an advertisement for their zine in video form, which is close enough to a flyer, right? And I just got to talk about this. It is so hilarious. It is, you know, a, a near perfect rendition of, you know, early 2000s as seen on TV commercials. You def definitely got to check it out. The zine that this is for is called The Fuzzy Rush which is a it's a zine about um, Australian punk bands, <laughs> um, like, local to the creator. And I'm just going to link this video below. I want, I'm serious. You have to pause this video right now. I will, I will not be offended. You need to pause this video right now. Go down, click that link, and watch this video. I'm just linking to where the creator uploaded it on Reddit. All right, and now that you have fully experienced that beautiful piece, I will show off the uh, free zine that I have for today, which is called Umbilical Discord, and it's basically a per zine. It's very... the, the, uh, the creator describes it as lo-fi punk craft. I have no idea what, like, any of those words mean, but, <laughs> you know, it's a vibe, I guess. Um, so... Anyway, this is like a, it's like a per zine slash art zine, I guess you'd say, by Shem Shelley, and she's just very unique, very cool. It's kind of trippy. <laughs> it's, it's really weird, but, um, there are five issues, all of which are currently available for free to download on Ichito, so I highly recommend <laughs> checking that out. The reason that I highlighted this particular zine for this particular prompt is because I found this zine through an ad, not a flyer, um, but through an ad, so that, that kind of counts, right? <laughs> the prompt for day 18 is Zine Trade Day. Ask someone to trade or swap zines with you. Um, I have been doing a whole bunch of zine trades throughout the month that I have been thoroughly enjoying. I have a packet of zines that I am sending off today, and I'm sure that I will have more <laughs> to send off in the future. So I'm going to take this as an opportunity to remind everybody here that I am always up for trades, and it doesn't have to be just zines. If you see some of my zines and you are interested in trading for them, but you don't have your own zines, that I am happy to trade for zines from your collection, even if they were made by somebody else, or things that aren't zines. If you want to draw something, or if you have, like, any creative projects that you are willing to trade, or, you know, want to pull a tarot card for me, or, or whatever, like, I am always up for trades of any kind. So if you want to start expanding your zine collection or just see what zines are all about, don't feel like you need to send me a zine. You know, you can send me any piece of art, artist training card, um, music, tarot readings, or, you know, to be perfectly honest, if you just wrote me and said, hey, I really like your zines, I can't buy them, can you mail them to me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You can trade me with with love for zines, and that is more than enough. <laughs>
In addition to my own zines, which are always up for trade, I also have this big box of zines that I have collected from others that I am up for trading. <laughs> so these are zines that, you know, they're all fabulous and I love them, but just for whatever reason, for space concerns or just uh, some of these I have doubles and some of them I have a whole bunch of other zines by the creator and I just feel like I want to share them or get new ones. Like I have this big, I have a big box of zines that I am happy to trade. So what I've done is I went ahead and made a big list of these. Um, and I will continue to update that list with, uh, if I ever add any more to this category, you know, if I had, have any more zines that I'm willing to trade. Um, so all of those are going to be on this Google doc that you can check out below. And so if you're interested in any of these zines, also contact me. They're up for trade, or also, if you just like them, I will probably send them for free. Um, yeah, so just let me know. For today, I have two free zines that are available um, by the same creator, uh, Bird Bohannon. And the they're both really great, and the reason that I wanted to select these for this particular topic is because I feel like they are very encouraging and they are, uh, ho will hopefully be inspiring for you to create your own zine so that if you don't have zines to trade right now, you can make one to have to trade with me or anyone else in the future. <laughs> so the two zines I have, one is Accessible Supplies and the other is Everything is Information. Accessible Supplies is basically about creating art with what you have and allowing your um, supplies and, and the sort of cheap and easy supplies like ballpoint pens and sharpies and tape and whatever to um, inspire you to create without feeling constrained and without feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm using up these expensive art supplies and, you, you, you know, it can be easy to kind of get yourself in the mindset of like, this needs to be good, this needs to be fancy because I'm using real supplies or, you know, using easily accessible supplies can be very liberating and very freeing and this sort of talks about that, <laughs> which is really great. And Everything is Information is a book, it's, it's an art book basically, I guess you'd say, with a whole bunch of sigils and doodles um, done on different themes. All of them are uncharged sigils that you can use for other things and just... The reason that I selected this one in particular is because I feel like a lot of these drawings and a lot of these sigils and things are sort of based off of doodles and based off of very simple forms and lines and so it's a good reminder that you don't need to be a good artist. You don't need to be able to produce anything like professional in order to make zines. So I hope that both of these zines will be inspiring to you and I highly recommend that you check them out. Um, I, and in addition to those, Bird Bohannon has a few other zines on her website so that are all freely available to download. <laughs> so I encourage you to do so. The prompt for day 19 is Zine Distro Appreciation Day. Tell people about and order from a Zine Distro. So um, I talked a lot about distros on day four, I want to say it was. No, day seven. Oh, geez. <laughs> I talked a lot about um, Zine Distros and I gave a big list of some of my favorites and I still highly recommend all of those Zine Distros. I think that distro owners you know, do so much for the community and do so much for bringing, bringing zinesters together and answering questions and representing zinesters at tabling events and generally just, you know, their entire work of being a, a distributor, being a distro, is getting zines out there. And I think that is very... <sighs> I appreciate it very much. <laughs> so Zine Distro appreciation to all Zine Distro owners slash runners slash employees, whatever. 
I really, really appreciate the work that you do, and you make this zine community so much richer, and I feel like you kind of stitch us all together <laughs> in a great way. So, um, I have a big list of zine distros that I uh, highlight in the Day 7 video, and I'll just link the Day 7 video in the cards up here if you haven't seen it. And I'm also going to highlight this list that my new zine friend Nina from Echo Zines made on a blog of, you know, Nina's been doing a blog for International Zine Month, which you should totally check out and read all of them, but this one in particular has many zine distros that I have not heard of and that I had not mentioned, and I want to highlight these specifically and highlight this list for you to go and check out, because a lot of them are based in the EU and the UK, so if you are not based in America, then you should these these may be more local to you, and you should check them out and um, order from them, and shipping will probably be cheaper. <laughs> so, um, yes, Nina from Echozines. I'll link the blog post with all of the um, other zine distros highlighted down below. The free zine that I have for the Day 19 prompt is called Cut the Crap, which is a punk music zine that highlights a bunch of punk musicians, um, like modern, smaller punk musicians and stuff. They have uh, reviews, album reviews and band reviews and that sort of thing. They have interviews and, you know, generally everything that you could possibly want from a very <laughs> classic style punk music zine. And it's so pretty. It's so well laid out and, and so fun to read. Um, the reason that I'm highlighting Cut the Crap for this particular prompt is because it is put out by a music label. So that kind of counts, right? Because a music label, a small music label is basically just like, it's a distro, but for music instead of um, zines. And the last prompt that I have for this particular video, which will get me almost caught up, <laughs> is day 20, talk about a thing you learned in a zine. For example, I once read in a zine that dot dot dot. And um, for this one, I actually just recently got the zine like a few days ago, and the zine is called DIY Zines and Comics, um, a sort of how-to by Fly, and I believe, yeah, it's done by Microcosm. I got it from a site called Handmade Toledo, which has some more great zines that I will highlight um, in my wrap-up video. Uh, and the, this one was really interesting because um, there's this really great section right at the beginning on a brief history of publishing in zines, and it talks about um, movable... Like, it talks about... Okay, <laughs> can I say something? People usually will talk about zines as having originated in the 1930s as being fanzines, like... Um, because in the 1930s there were all of these fanzines for sci-fi and pulp fiction and mystery and all of these other fiction to bring fans together. And those are great, but I have always maintained that zines are much older than that. <laughs> and this definitely seems to validate that, where it talks about some of the oldest known woodblock printing, oldest known movable type, and uh, the Gutenberg printing press, and all this stuff. And what caught my attention about this and what I wanted to show off is that it describes a radical self-publishing activist named Lucy Parsons from the uh, mid to late 1800s. And that's really interesting because around here there's this little radical feminist bookstore called the Lucy Parsons Center. And it's one of those things that, frankly, I still haven't managed to get it together to actually go and visit, <laughs> even though it's really close to me. Um, but it it always caught my attention and it always sparked my curiosity and I always wanted to learn more about it. And I always kept meaning to look up, like, who is Lu Lucy Parsons? And then I'm reading the zine and it describes who she is right here and it's amazing. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to read this paragraph on Lucy Parsons um, because... I'm not going to be able to remember all the dates exactly if I just try to summarize it. So, here we go. 
Some of the bravest of the radical self-publishing activists in American history were Lucy Parsons and her husband, Albert. In 1883, they started independently publishing a radical socialist journal in Chicago called the Journal of the International Working People's Association, the IWPA, which evolved into the International Workers of the World, pop popularly known as the Wobblies. Lucy Parsons was born in Texas in 1853 of Native American and African American descent. She married Albert Parsons, a white man, in 1871, and they had to move to Chicago to escape persecution for their interracial marriage. They became highly effective anarchist organizers and activists, writing and publishing on behalf of the labor movement, support of the rights of political prisoners, people of color, the homeless, and women. In 1886, her husband, who had been heavily involved in campaigning for the eight-hour day, was arrested, tried, and executed on November 11, 1887, by the state of Illinois on charges that he had conspired in the Haymarket Riot, an event which was widely regarded as a political frame-up and which marked the beginning of the May Day labor rallies in protest. That is so amazing <laughs> and it's another one of those things where it's you you hear about all these amazing radical activists and radical activists of color and you think why the hell have i never heard of this person before <laughs> so lucy parsons really cool lady and i just think it's so uh perfect i guess it's, it's kismet that I was <laughs> read that I I finally was introduced to her properly through a zine. The free zine that I have to show off for day 20 is called You Are New to This and I Am Too by Mel. And this is a really great little how-to zine on um starting the process of recovery from mental health issues and mental health trauma, um, and especially depression and other issues that lead to suicidal ideation. I really, I really appreciate this zine because it sort of talks about something that is often overlooked in the recovery process, which is that it's not as simple as just, you know, at some point you just start recovering and now you are in recovery and you're you're beginning the process but there's sort of this transition period which mel describes very uh succinctly as pre-recovery that involves a sort of dedication to yourself and to beginning the recovery process and a sincere belief that things will be able to get better even just if it's a glimmer of hope so the zine talks a lot about um a few steps for getting started and really getting yourself in the right mindset to begin further recovery with a therapist and or with other um, support mechanisms. And what I really appreciate about this is that they make it clear that it's not as simple as just starting to exercise uh, and eating better or whatever. Like if you are struggling with depression, you can't just decide, okay, I'm just going to get better sleep and I'm just going to sleep more. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but although that's a noble goal, there's, if you just sort of dive in, assuming that you're going to be able to start recovering, then you're probably going to be setting yourself up to fail because you really need to prepare yourself for it. I don't know. I'm gonna, I am I don't want to go on too long about this, but it's a really great little zine, and they, uh, um, Mel included in a, uh, read me, a collection of additional resources, so I really appreciate his work on this zine, and I just wanted to share it all with you. All right, so I will see you soon with one of my favorite days, which is Zine Library Day, and I'm very excited to show off some zine libraries, talk about what zine libraries do, and I'm gonna have a whole big long video just on that. <laughs> um, so I will see you soon. Bye.